today our champion Jack Quinn of Fremont, New Hampshire, faces the challenge of George Miro of South Dennis, Massachusetts on Candles in Bowling. Oh. Hi everybody, welcome to Candles in Bowling. I'm Don Gillis and I'm speaking for the whole crew when I say we're glad you could join us here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts for three strings of Candles in Bowling. And as you know, total pinfall determines our winner. Each bowler takes home a permanent souvenir. These are provided by Din Brothers of Boston and Holyoke. Each will take home some guaranteed prize money. $700 goes to the winner, $350 goes to the runner-up. There's $50 available to the winner of each string. If they should tie, then they split that at $25 a piece. And of course, there's an extra $100 for going over $400. Other ways that our bowlers can uh, make money. Most of you are very familiar with them. Uh, our marksman of the day will receive a $50 gift certificate from Rotman's Furniture uh, of Worcester. And speaking of that, when a person has won three in a row, and Jack is going for that today, he would receive a recliner from Berger. I'll tell you a little bit more about that, but right now let's talk to today's voter, shall we? I want to know, George, uh, why you stay away so long. You came here in 76, and then five years later, and then, uh, what, three years after that, and now look how long it's been, huh? Yeah, I know, it's been a long time, hasn't it? <laughs> but, uh, let's see, you, uh, uh, you have run into uh, <laughs> Rosario Lechiara, and uh, Peter Flynn, and yeah. Steve Adney. Yeah. So we thought we'd give you an easy one today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, let's see. Uh, right now, George is uh, hitting at a 118, uh, and you're working for Ryan Family Amusement, huh? Yeah. Uh, we're, we're very familiar with them, as you well know, in the bowling industry. And uh, Jack Quinn is very much aware of the fact that uh, he has won two in a row, and the three in a row means uh, a gift certificate for a Berkline recliner, huh? Yep. <laughs> that wouldn't be bad, would it, huh? No, it wouldn't be at all. <laughs> and a $50 gift certificate to go along with that, huh? That would be very, very nice. Okay. Good luck to you, George. And, uh, 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 usually three times means you're going to win, but this is four, okay? All right. We'll get underway right after this. Challenger George Miro, high single, 203, high triple, 488, league average, 188. 118. 118. He's left the three, four, six, and ten, and uh, four and ten still there. George had a 666 in winning his roll off. That one just plain got away. He picked off the 10 pin. Went to the right again, and there are still five pins standing. The one, the two, the seven, eight, and nine. It's a nine. Now our defending champion, Jack Quinn of Fremont, New Hampshire. High single, 192, high triple, 479, league average, 132. Two full on the head pin. Jack's roll-off score was 707. And you know that's for five strings. It's a nine. Thirteenth appearance on uh, this program for Jack. And last year he finished fifth in our championship show the live show. <laughs> now challenger George Miro comes to the line at lane two. 
Here he is. Uh, we've mentioned this before. Georgia's uh, late father, Mike. And he has a strike. Was on our show twice back in 1967 and in 1968. First bonus ball. Oh, so close. Wow. One pin to six pin, and it just, it's still rocking, but it wouldn't go. So strike and spare. A couple of marks for our challenger, George Miro. Jack working on a strike and first ball nets him six, leaves the three, six, ten on the right, the seven pin over on the left, a piece of wood near the seven. Can he do it? No, had to move the three and didn't. Punched out the six. It's an eight. Looking at four horsemen right side, and in back of that, the five and the nine. Head pin still standing. A ten. With the bonus ball still to be uh, rolled by our challenger, George Miro, the score right now, after four, with pins already down, is Miro, 48, and Quinn, 44. Trying for three in a row now, George Miro. Nine down, he has one pin to pick up the 10. That 10 pin. Yes, he has it. And that's worth $50 in bonus money. Six. That's the fill. He's looking at the two, four, seven, and ten. And made it again. Now he has four in a row. Jack Quinn, our defending champion. He leaves uh, the six and seven. Got the six, and there was a piece of wood there that he was hoping would go over and pick off the seven pin, but it didn't work. for wood to settle down, which you'll not use. It's a 10. Got a triangle to try to convert. This one is made up of the three, five, and six. Nope. 
Missed the uh, three pin. Left the three and five. Took out the six. It's a nine. All right, challenger George Miro, South Dennis, Massachusetts. Fourth appearance on our program and right now has four marks in a row. A strike and three consecutive spares. That got him five. Now looking at the one, two, eight, and nine. One piece of wood. He has five in a row. $150 in bonus money and still counting. Almost another strike. Everything down except the nine pin. He has another. Six in a row. A little too full for Jack Quinn. 3 6 10 on the right, 4 and 8 on the left. Too full that time on the 3 pin. It's an 8 box. Basically what he's left is the diamond left plus the seven pin. In other words, he's got two, four, five, and eight making up the diamond, but he also has the seven pin. And he got all but the five. It's a nine box. Now challenger George Miro comes up again. Six consecutive marks up on the board. That was a thin hit. Just four. Ten pin alone over on the right and a cluster of pins on the left. Okay, that stops the bonus streak right there. Now, let's see what he'll have in the box. It's an eight. One, three, seven, and ten. That's what he's looking at. <laughs> Took the three. Now looking at one, seven, ten. Almost made the one, seven, ten. And of course, that gets everybody worked up because of the fact that that high-low jackpot is at the highest it's ever been, ever, 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 ever been, 2,600 right now. Then hit by our defending champion. He still has four pins standing, including the 10 pin over on the right, and on the left, the two, four, and seven. It's a nine. Oh, 
yellow tough break he wound up with parallel pins five and six nine and ten there is a piece of wood to the left but he didn't go for it so he has still left two pins and now for a ten box yes So very contrasting strings right now. And another $50 in bonus money goes to Mike Miro as he won this first string by a score of 139 to 99. It's the middle string. That means our defending champion leads it off. Here's Jack Quinn of Fremont, New Hampshire. Five and seven are the two pins that are up. The wood is to the right. And the lob, fortunately for him, it didn't cost him anything because all the lob did was make the ball go to the right and miss everything except the wood. It's an eight. him with another split over on the right he has the six and ten on the left the seven got the six and ten but the seven's still there it's a ten now George Miro George is married and father of two. No wood to help. He's looking at four horsemen right side and the seven pin in the opposite corner. Punched out the three. It's a seven. He's looking at seven and eight. A couple of pieces of wood. And uh, one of them will go off to the right, but the other could help him make this. Nope. And he leaves the eight pin. Now Jack Quinn coming up. He's picked up two. Was down by 40, now down by 38. Long, long way to go. All right, Jack got a break here. Time call by Ralph Stewart wants to take a check on a piece of wood and obviously it's going to be removed because it's rolling toward the bowler and as you know the deadwood line is exactly two feet from the middle of the head pin toward the bowler and anything that is this side of it has to be removed. Now going forward, he's got it. Spare in the third. Little too full, no wood to help. He got five, but he's left the two, four, seven on the left, the six and ten on the right. Boy, it looked good while he was going down there. He did take out the four and seven and looked as if he was going to just hit the left side of that two and kick it over to get the six and ten. 
It is an eight as he has left the two and the ten. Now Mike Miro. Our challenger from Cape Cod fires. He's left himself the three, six, and seven. Didn't get the three, got the six and seven. Ralph Stewart calling time. And you get a hand. Ralph, of course, is our lob line judge and referee. It's a 10. Al Giglio keeps score on the electronic scoreboard. Keith Williams on the big board for the folks who are here. Don Riley, of course, is our statistician and coordinator. George Miro, no wood to help, is now looking at the one, two, seven, ten. Got just the one. It will be, wait till we see whether this is gonna knock down the 10 or not. A piece of wood rolled over, hit it, rocked it, but no, it's going to be a nine. And so after four boxes in the middle string, when again we take a check on the scoreboard, it this time is Jack Quinn leading by a score of 41 to 35. Jack Quinn, our defending champion, rolling in the fifth and sixth boxes of the middle string. Now has the one, two, four, eight on the left, six and 10 on the right, and no wood to help. One little piece in the back. Right down the open space. It's an eight box. Our crew today is Skip Peabody, Marjorie McKenna, Bob Armitage, Ken Sullivan, and in post-production videotape, George Ellard. Five and eight are the two pins still standing for Jack Quinn. Bill Rubin, of course, is our producer and director. Waiting for a little piece of wood to settle down, which happens to be perpendicular to the pins and obviously to himself. And he wants to be able to get at them, but right now it's in the way. He was able to use it. Hit it well and made a spear. Now our challenger, George Miro from South Dennis. He has a strike. A little slow in developing, but eventually the five dropped, which was the last one standing. First ball nets him five and leaves him with the one, two, four, six, ten. He still has the one, two, and four. So the fill is seven. Now hoping for a ten. He's got a ten. Now Jack Quinn is working on a spear. Nine is the fill. And 
The single pin to pick up for another spare is the five. He's got it. Two in a row. That's the fill, and the two pins that are standing are the one and the ten, and let's see where the wood is going to settle down. He's got one piece of wood that's not quite back as far as the ten, then he's got another one that's on a good angle right behind the one, which is going to make it go, and he has three in a row for $50 in bonus money. Our challenger, George Miro. And George comes back with another strike. First bonus ball. He has another strike. Wait till he comes back up again. There'll be a little bit of excitement for that. Jack Quinn has three marks in a row. $50 in bonus money. His only bonus money so far. He's done well in the bonus money the last two weeks. Six is the fill on his last spare. Now leaving him with a two, four, seven on the left. The 10 on the right. He got two of them, the two and the four. Pretty shot for a 10, but that's not what he wants. He wants marks. At 122 right now and two bonus balls to be fired. Here's the first. That gets him seven more. 129. 131. Good middle string for our defending champion. Now let's see what our challenger, George Miro, can do. He has two consecutive strikes. No, he did not get three strikes in a row for an extra bonus of $1,000. He has two pins to pick up, though, for a spare. The one and the two. He has it. Another $50 in bonus money for today's challenger. Five. Leaving the uh, one, three, and nine, plus the four and seven. Got the one, three, nine, four and seven still there. Eight. So by two pins, our challenger George Miro picks up another $50 in bonus money for winning the middle string 133 to 131. And after two, he leads the match 272 to 230. Third string getting underway. Here is our challenger George Miro. And he begins with a strike. Oh, oh, oh. 
He almost came back with another. Everything down except the five pin. For a spare, no, he just missed it. Missed it on the other side. Now Jack Quinn. Jack rolled an excellent 131 middle string. His challenger, George Miro, did him two pins better with a 133. It's a strike for Jack Quinn, our defending champion. Eight on the first ball, and he has left parallel pins, five and six. You got Wood to the right side of the five which could go over and get the six, depending upon where he hits it. Nope. Got the five. It's a ten box. Our challenger, George Miro. Two pins still standing. They are the three and the seven. Wood to the left of the three pin. Can he get it and move it over? He fired it off the sidewall, but it missed the seven pin coming back. It's a ten. Pretty full that time, but uh, he did knock down seven. He's got the six and ten on the right, the seven pin over on the left. Still there. to 10. Those of you who watch all the time are aware that I describe everything for those who are blind or at least uh, have limited sight. Too full, it's a spread eagle. And uh, you're all very understanding, but every once in a while somebody will let me know that they think that I'm talking too much. So it's always nice to get a little note like this. Dear Don, may I give you a great big thank you for your running commentary on Candleton Bowling for all of those with visual handicaps. It's a, it's a nice shot for a 10. Although I have my sight, I enjoy listening to the excitement in your voice and think of the joy that you must bring to those whose sight is impaired. Thanks again for your consideration, even though it might annoy some. Sincerely, Reverend Robert Jackson, Chairman Americans with Disabilities Committee. Seven ten split. Two pieces of wood have not decided where they're going to go yet. But not bad, forming a V about where the three would be. One could get the 10, the other get the seven. Let's see if it works that way. It did. George Miro, fifth box, third string. Two more have tumbled. He's one, one pin away right now from a spare, and it is the nine pin. 
with four pieces of wood gathered around. There's no guarantee, obviously, we all know that wood is necessarily going to make something happen. Well, I guess I call that one because uh, you look at it and you say, how can it miss with four pieces of wood all around it? But we know how the wood can react. One hits another and they sometimes just spray away from the target. And that's exactly what happened with George. He did pick it up for a 10. Two pull on the head pin that time. Now he's looking at the two, four, seven on the left and uh, he has the three pin on the right. Nope, that one, he held onto that one too long and his arm had gone through too far and he just picked off the seven. He left the goal post, the two and uh, the three. It's an eight. He does fire the ball. All right, working on a spear right now is our defending champion. Let's see what Jack Quinn can do. Oh, tough break. He's got parallel pins, which means that that's the five and six on one line and behind it, the nine and 10. He's got a piece of wood to the left. He wants it to move up closer to the five but it just teases. It goes toward it and then goes back away. Tried to use it, but it didn't work. He got two of the four. Nine. Five boxes left. That's what he needs. A strike in a six. Now our challenger, George Miro, who has really put the pressure on, starting with the third box of the first string when he ran off six in a row. Diamond right plus the 10, no wood to help. Three, five, six, nine, ten. And got everything except the six. A 10. Almost another strike, everything down except the seven. Waiting for a piece of wood to settle down. The only one, it will not be in play. Yes, he has made the spare in the eighth. All right, Jack Quinn, four boxes to go, working on a strike, and uh, at this particular point, down by 36 pins. Nine on the first ball, and obviously an excellent opportunity to make a spare. Five pin. Does not go exactly the same thing that happened with Mike, where there is wood all around it, and you'd almost say this is automatic, and yet you hit the wood, and it just splits a lob, so it's a nine. Jack, not too happy right now.
Jack Quinn, our defending champion, and very frustrated right now. Nice 10. But our challenger, of course, George Miro, with that great start. And of course, our defending champion, Jack, rolled just a 99 in that first string. And that, but that really killed him. Eight is the fill on his spare, and he's now looking at six and 10. Nope, got just the 10, but not the six and 10. All right, it's 10 in the ninth. Just two pins standing, one of them, well, they're both rocking, but they're gonna stay up. It's a three and five. He's got it. Bear in the tenth. He adds five. A one nineteen. And 34 pins down with two boxes to go is our defending champion, Jack Quinn. What he wanted was strike, but it didn't happen. And he won't have a spare either. Ralph Stewart has gone down to take a look at the piece of wood and now the wood rolls by itself into the pit. And it's a 10 for Jack Quinn. Final box. We have a new champion, as you know. Now Jack Quinn looking at three, four, seven. Waiting for wood. One piece of wood rolling back and forth. Just to the left of the three pin. He tried to use it to make the spare and then sort of waves his hand in disgust. 10. And congratulations from our former champion to the new champion. George Miro, as he wins it, 391 to 352. We have $300 in our home viewer jackpot that we'd like to give away. Just a quick reminder, we're asking you to send in on a postcard, not a letter, your guess as to what the total pinfall will be, both bowlers combined, on a day that you hope that I draw your card. And we don't limit you to one card except one per day. You can send in obviously in a month's time 30 of them just make sure that uh, you include your name and address and the guests and send it along to this address please which is Candlepin Bowling WCBB TV 5 TV Place Needham Massachusetts and the zip is 02192 then uh, I give you 10 either side not I but we give you 10 either side of the total the total today is 743 so that means anywhere from 733 to 753 would win $300 but when I draw the card, even if it's nowhere near that, that person will be rewarded with a handsome gift from the Parker Pen Company. And when we do have a winner, we empty out the bin. And I know that Al and Keith love doing that. They're very happy to do it for you. And then we start all over again. <laughs> okay. All right, let's find out now. Got a big grin on that one. <laughs> 
743 for $300. All right. This one uh, comes from Burlington, Massachusetts. Helen Finch. And Helen's guess is 765. That would have won last week. That's right. It would have won last week. Okay, we, George, we have a high-low jackpot that nobody has won for over two years. It's up there in a very, very lovely neighborhood, $2,600. So if you want to knock down those three pins, you'll walk away with it. Still there, Jack. <laughs> okay. All right. Son of a gun. Now it goes to 2,625. Just amazing. Just amazing. Okay, George, you want to come up here? Jack gets, Jack, uh, unfortunately, Jack comes closer to me today. Well, you get a little sometimes. <laughs> I know. He had a nice run, but I'll tell you, it, it, and we all know, when a, when a guy suddenly fires six marks in a row in the first string, oh, it's huh? hard to come back. It sure is, yeah. And, uh, of course, you had a subpar Jack Quinn first uh, string, which uh, makes uh, it that much different. You have different. them days every now and then. Yeah, I know. Well, Part of the game. Well, listen, you rolled a 405 and a 410. You're still in fifth place, you know, but I... That's, uh, but, well, but, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, not with a 410, I guess not. Okay, uh, this time you get the 350 plus uh, $100 in bonus money, and you get this from Din Brothers. And, Thank you and very it's much. It's always a pleasure to see you and say Thank hi you. to Brian and everybody else, will Thank you? you? Okay, George! Keep going. This uh, is your permanent souvenir, and uh, that comes from Din Brothers of Boston Holyoke, but what you're probably mostly interested in is uh, $350 in bonus money plus $700. You are also our marksman of the day and get a $50 gift certificate from Rotman Furniture. And as a reward for all of what you've done today, I'm going to let you meet a challenger named Ed Zernicky next week. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Yeah. We'll see you. Bye-bye. <laughs>